Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. This is a podcast on the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com. I'll call the guy a chicken fucker. Easy ride. Easy ride. Easy ride. Easy ride. License and registration. Chicken fucker. How you shooting today, Thorne? Get on all morning. How about that little fella? Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. How you feeling there, Mac? Good in the but our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, right? Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. Hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No! Put those away! You boys like Mexico! Welcome to Super Movie Brothers Movie Cocktail Podcast. This is episode 67. Tonight we are going to be talking about Super Troopers. So just very quickly, you might notice that I said this is episode 67. We had to go back and renumber some of our episodes. Movie Cocktail Podcast is now part of Super Movie Brothers. So all the previous episodes we put out... uh, three of them so that just added three to our number of episodes so we just jumped from episode number 63 or 62 or 63 and now this is episode 67 but i'm joined tonight with my normal co-host super movie brother jay how you doing guys nothing super about him and then of course i am also joined by the host of the fan film boys podcast rob thank thank you very much dave yes uh, i'm rob of the fan film boys podcast and then i am also joined by my good friend and i was gonna say former co-host of movie cocktail podcast and then i was like no he's now still current host of movie cocktail (laughs) podcast (laughs) (laughs) mark's like what's he gonna say about me (laughs) what's he gonna say (laughs) <laughs> so, <laughs> so I am also joined by my good friend, Mark of MarkDickerson.com. What's yes. up? Hello. I hope to have another podcast to plug on here at some point. <laughs> but you're, you're, you're a, you, you're, you literally. You're a filmmaker, though. I'm saying, yeah, you do what we talk about. Like, yeah. you're the guy that does the thing that we do. I try. I try. And, uh, Rob, you had some, uh, some news, something you wanted to plug about your episode this week? Yes. Um, it's been a little while since I've, uh, released an episode. Uh, there's been some changes into uh, the Fan Film Boys. Uh, my usual co-host has had to uh, take a break uh, for some uh, personal reasons. So uh, we know he had a baby and uh, that's been kind of extended out. So basically, uh, I'm going to be going solo, but having some guest co-hosts uh, with me. And my first one, of course, is you, Dave. So uh, right after we record Woo-hoo. here, we're going to be recording a, a nice little uh, new Fan Film Boys. And we're going to be focusing on a Blade Runner fan film perfect because i am fresh off of seeing blade runner 2049 i haven't seen that one yet i'm fresh off of watching actual blade runner for the first time so uh, i'm sure we're gonna have a good good conversation awesome and of course the movie we're talking about tonight as you heard in the intro is 2001's super troopers now this movie did not do well in the theater so i i don't I don't suspect many of you guys even saw this in the theaters where it really found its its home and its cult following was on home video. So we're just going to go around the horn. We're going to talk about everyone's first experience with the film, when they first saw it, what their first impressions of it were. And we're going to get started with Jay. Well, I saw it, um, gosh, I don't know when the first time I saw it. Oh, gee, oh, pieces, gosh. I don't know but when I saw it. Over the course of, you know, <laughs> since it came out. So um in bits and pieces and i never really saw it from start to finish until today which is like 90 percent of the movies that we're doing for (laughs) movie cocktail podcast i've never seen it uh this is my this is my first experience with the film well 
That's how it is sometimes. <laughs> That's how it is I'm all the time. You watched it, James. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll join in the you conversation guys are into more this time. Kind of genre. Plus, <laughs> I only got into movies after later in life. So, <laughs> all right, Rob. What about you? Um, I can't recall seeing it in the theater. To tell you the truth, I can't recall the first time I saw it. I know I saw it in its entirety, so I didn't see it in bits and pieces. I did see the whole thing. Um, I just can't recall how exactly I saw it the first time. So Jay sees every movie as Reese's Pieces. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I did love it once I saw it. I, I thought it was hilariously funny and just different from a lot of the films that were out at the time. It's just the, the, the comedy in there was just something that was completely different than than anything uh, that I was watching at the, at the, at the time. So. You just did something that was absolutely baffling to me. What's that? You just used an adjective to describe an adjective to describe a movie. Oh, that's my strain in me. <laughs> Hilariously <laughs> funny. <laughs> We're going to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Rob from Pam Film Boy says, it's hilariously <laughs> funny. <laughs> I like that. That might be my uh, signature right there. <laughs> All right, Mark, what about you? What's your first experience with it? Um, I actually did see it in, in the theaters. What? Which, I guess, uh, when I was in high school. Wow, I'm really old. Um yeah, that was uh, about me and a bunch of my friends. We go, went and saw it, and um, I don't. I think we only saw it once in theaters, but we saw it many times after that when it came out on DVD. Uh, it was actually like pretty big um, among my uh, group of friends, and uh, actually some of my friends that were in a band they actually sampled a lot of the, the very quotable lines from the movie and on their uh, their CD that came out. So yes, we were big fans of their, the Super their CD Super. that came out all their the way album. back in two thousand and two. <laughs> yes, it was a CD. It was not a you know MP3s or anything. It was not one of those compact discs. <laughs> it was one of those compact discs. Yeah. Uh, I saw this definitely when I was in high school, not in the theaters. I was not as uh, I guess I, I guess I, I did not have my my finger on the pulse of cult comedy quite like uh, Mark does. There was a buzz about it though before it came out. I mean, a little bit of a buzz among like underground comedy. There was, and we'll get into to yeah. where that buzz came from when we when we talk about later on in the third segment of it where we talk about kind of like the background of the film and stuff like that but uh for me i saw it i believe you know i was in high school this is one of those films much like when i talk about Shaun of the dead this is something that i found with my friend kenny and me and him ended up watching together and absolutely loving it was something that was it was different than the comedies that were coming out at the time you know this is right off of a lot of adam sandler comedies and stuff like that like there was kind of like almost like a standard fare to comedy films at this time so to have something like this with a bunch of fresh faces, a bunch of guys that for the majority people- a lot people, of Saturday Night Live type of movies, you know, coming yeah, off there uh, was. characters off Saturday Night Live right. or, of, yeah. you know, those sorts of comedies where, of you know- lesser ones, I Exactly. Guess. So like, like you were saying, Adam Sandler movies where right. they might have- done a skit like that or something right. like that on, on Saturday Night Live. And this is a lot like, you know, this is kind of like Anchorman Light, where it's kind of like that type of, of weird, ballsy comedy that kind of has a little bit of ad lib, a little sketchy, but it doesn't go as far as Anchorman does. You and it came it out improv? before that. As improv? There are, there's there's a lot of improv that's involved really? with it, okay. but it was, well, you can see that, it yeah. was script, really? it, yeah. there was a script to it. Yeah. See, to me it seems very written, but I, I don't know. That could be. There, it was, it was written, all four of them Actually, this film went through a bunch of rewrites, and it's one of the reasons when we start talking about Broken Lizard that they've had such an issue, because they do believe themselves to be five guys, and everyone has an equal say, Mm -hmm. and sometimes that causes some some script issues and Mm -hmm. filming issues. But, uh, you know, it just just felt so different, right? It, It was... It was uh, just just the, the comedy in itself was very different. You know, it wasn't afraid to be wacky, um, but it still almost grounded itself as well in this. And it had that little strange. element of like, like you said, we we might have all been in high school or something like that at the age. It had that adult feature to it where some of the comedy was very adult orientated. You know, who wants a mustache, right? You know, who. Who who said that when you're in high school? It's Afghanistan uh, it, animation. Exactly. But you said that after this film, you know, you, everybody knew what a mustache ride was after yeah. the film. But before that, it's not something that was like a most common language. Yeah. But you'd, you you said about Ron Burgundy and stuff like that. That was hilarious comedy, but it didn't go that same sort of route in terms of the no, adult. No, no. Uh, you know, where this comedy was in this. right. Where this was this film was scripted, and this film, um, you know, it. It, it actually followed a story, you know, it, 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 and it didn't get too outlandish. It, it got outlandish, but it didn't get too outlandish. Yeah. It didn't get too unbelievable. Anchorman went the other yeah, way, where yeah. it like got more yeah. outlandish as it went along. There's actually a lot of plot in this movie, and I, I remember being actually annoyed by that before. But I, I watched it again, actually, uh, today, and the plot's pretty loose, I, right? It's pretty, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's a plot, but 
you know, <laughs> for example, they'll have scenes of exposition, but, you know, there's a scene where they're, you know, the, the plot is advancing, but at the same time, he's shooting a, a guy in the, a jock strap in, in his, you know, crotch. And basically. that's a good, like, 10 minute scene. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and I kind of, now looking back on that as a filmmaker, kind of respect how they did that because it's still a comedy. It's like, we still want to have, a, you know, some kind of story, but we're going right. to also make you laugh while we're, you know, Yeah. I mean, they, they definitely broke it up, uh, where, you know, each scene did progress the story. However, it didn't mind taking that scene in a divergent path, doing yeah. something funny and then bringing it back. Bring like it back. most yeah. of the scenes would start with that type of exposition and, yeah. and getting the story moving forward, but then would end in some mm-hmm. sort of, so uh, story plot or, or, or and they would end in some sort of like hilarious way. Yeah, yeah. And then the scene would just end. Somehow I, it worked. Yeah. yeah I, I come to, to Farva attacking the guy at the, at the burger <laughs> joint. Like that, that's how that scene ends. But yeah, yeah. before that, there was a little bit of like exposition, learning about Thorny and who mm-hmm. Thorny is and what he's going to do after everything like that. Yeah. So uh, I, I think I think that's kind of like how they kind of structured the movie as like these almost like these almost like skits mm-hmm. that each of these characters were in, but they played the same character right. in every skit. And you actually do care about the characters, which is interesting because it is such a baldy comedy, but. I don't know. I've, I found myself like I don't know, just like really rooting for the characters and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely, I was, and uh, well, not all, except of them. for Farva. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he's hilarious, so you know. It's, it's I mean, you still, but everybody's got a friend like that, though. Yeah, everyone, I mean, that's, everyone knows in, in a group of friends. Exactly. There's always that one guy who it's like you. The, yeah. He's part of the group, but you don't really want him to be part <laughs> yeah. of the group. That you know, you, you treat him like shit. That but he he wants to be in there. It's you know, like, he uh, wants to be in the part of the jokes. He wants to, yeah. you know. So well, that's like, I mean, it's, it's like Cartman in South Park. Like yeah, that kind that, of, that's yeah. that's right there. Yeah. yeah, Jay is nothing like Farm, <laughs> 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 but that is my perpetual whipping boy. <laughs> All right, Mark. Uh, Rob actually mentioned mustache rides. Yes, and you invented the cocktail for this episode uh, in honor of this. And and it's called the Thorny Maple Mustache Ride. Yes. I had a little bit of help from uh, from Dave. <laughs> so <laughs> why don't you go through the... More than a little help. But. Why don't you go through the ingredients on this? All right. So here's the ingredients. And this is delicious, by the way. Um, two ounces of bourbon. Uh, we used bullet here. Yes, bullet uh, bourbon. Which is, you know, one of my faves. Um, one ounce of apple juice. Uh, half ounce maple syrup. Better syrup than Miss Butterworth, if if, uh, yeah. if you can afford it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> maple syrup is very expensive. Apparently. Don't break the but, bank. Don't buy like yeah. a five dollar. I mean, don't don't buy like a twenty dollar bottle of maple syrup. But get yourself like a five mm. six dollar yeah. bottle of syrup. Treat yourself. Treat treat yourself. Uh, yeah, and uh, two dashes bitters, uh, maraschino cherry on top, and serve over ice. And there you have it. Now, uh, when we made it this time, I I exchanged the uh, maraschino cherry on top. I actually put a um, – because Mark came up with it, but I actually made it for the podcast. Mark, Shh. if you can't tell, he's actually a little bit under the weather. Uh, so we didn't want him infecting all of our drinks. So, <laughs> so I mixed it together, and I took the cherry out, and I put a, uh apple wedge in there, a thin one, not a large one. And uh, because – because the uh, the maple syrup will tend to kind of like sink to the bottom until it mixes until it mixes in and blends with the rest of the whiskey and everything like that, um, I p- decided to put a cinnamon stick in there for you t- for both aroma and stirability. Mm. So it serves dual purposes. And then you're serving it on ice. I used whiskey balls because I have whiskey balls and I like to use them whenever I can. So, uh, gents, what do you, what does everyone think of this? It's beautiful. This is my kind of drink. Yeah, no, I'm loving it. Yeah. I, I, the the thickness of it you, you don't normally think of a, a cocktail or a right. drink uh, that you're drinking like this to be thick but that maple syrup in there just sort yeah. of helps coat your mouth when you're drinking it that it just it does. gives it the extra bit of flavor that i really enjoy yeah Right yeah. for this time of year. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of fall flavors in it. Um, I thought it was nice that we put the maple syrup in there. The nice part about the maple syrup is obviously Thorny is so good at <laughs> chugging maple syrup <laughs> that it just makes sense to call it, you know, Thorny's Maple Mustache Ride. Oh, uh, that is man. <laughs> I see so much of the powers derived from the lips. You got them skinny little bird lips. Thorny, he's got these, he's got, he's got these powerful lips. <laughs> I just took a bite of the apple too and uh, the extra flavor that just gets into that apple. It oh, infuses delicious. it, right? Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. So, yeah, this is really good if you want to try this at home. Uh, it's it's a fantastic drink, I must say. It's It goes down pretty easily. And one of the nice parts is if you're the type of person that enjoys bourbon, you can drink it quick and you'll get that bourbon flavor. If you don't mind waiting for your ice to melt a little bit, it tastes a lot like 
iced tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's actually pretty refreshing the longer the ice melts in it. So it blends it blends very, very nice the, the longer you drink it. But if you're the type of person that wants, your, that wants your bourbon flavor, you can either add more bourbon to the recipe or you can drink it fast and then make yourself another one. And then again. And then again, because you have no self control, you need. It. <laughs> you really have a problem, all right? <laughs> yeah, no, we need to. We need to talk. <laughs> no, good job on this one. This one's uh, definitely one of my favorites so far. Yeah, perfect. Better than one I made for uh, Howard, that's for sure. It's <laughs> probably my favorite. Yeah, but yours works great as a shot. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a shot, and that's that's that was the difference. Yeah, yeah. That's and if 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 you want to if you want to if you want to know, I, I talked to the guys about this. Um, once we've done enough of these episodes, we are actually going to put out a movie cocktail book. Where each of these cocktails is tailored after a different movie. We'll talk about the movie in the book. We'll all give the cocktail recipe. Uh, it'll be it'll basically be like one of those pamphlets you get when you go to one of those chain restaurants where it has the, the the listing of their drinks and stuff like that. It'll be like that, but there'll be about ten to twelve drinks in it for you to make at home. You don't have to listen to podcasts while you make it, but it's a nice it's a nice thing to uh, nice compliment. Yeah, it's a nice little compliment. So. Coming up next, we are going to get into the film itself, just scene by scene, some of the scenes we really loved, some of the aspects of the film we really loved. So stay tuned for that. All right, how about Cat Game? Cat Game, what's, uh, what's the record? Thorny did six, but I think you can do ten. Ten? Starting right in meow. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. All right, meow. And over your license and registration. Your registration? Uh, Hurry up, meow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's something funny here, boy? No, no, no. Well, then why are you laughing, Mr. Larry Johnson? <laughs> All right, meow, where were we? Are you saying meow? Am I saying meow? <laughs> I, I, th- I thought you... Don't think, boy. Meow, do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> meow, what is so damn funny? I could have swore you said meow. Do I look like a cat to you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Am I jumping around all nimbly bimbly from tree to tree? No, no. <laughs> Am I drinking milk from a saucer? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, do you see me eating mice? <laughs> Hey, you stop laughing right now. Yes. Now, I'm going to have to give you a ticket on this. But... No buts, meow. That's the law. Not so funny meow, is it? Meow. So welcome back. As we stated in the first segment, we're going to be talking about 2001's Super Troopers, written by the comedy troupe Broken Lizard and directed by one of its members. And this is something Mark really wants to do. We're going to go around the horn, and I want everybody to try and pronounce the director's name. We're going to start with Jay. Chad Transcar. Rob? Not even going to attempt. <laughs> Come on, you got to... You got to um, let me... I'm, We're all going to look like idiots, so... All right. Uh, Chandra Geska. Mark? <laughs> Chandra Sikar. That was, that was probably the closest one. It's Jay Chandra Sikar. Oh, all right. Pretty close. Yeah. So, Chandra Sikar. Do we know, is that like Indian? Is it... It... Uh, well... He's it, from Chicago. He's from, <laughs> <laughs> he's from Chicago. Is that Just Mexican? <laughs> it's, or, it's, is it from Arabia? <laughs> it's definitely... He's he's definitely Indian or Pakistani. But um, I believe he's Indian. So, but that doesn't matter. No. No. <laughs> We're not racist here. I was just wondering where the heritage was from. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is directed by Jay Chanda Sakar. And uh, he is one of the Broken Lizard members. He actually directs the majority of the films. But some people were surprised to find out that... that he, he plays Thorny. Did we mention that? Yes, yeah. he does play Thorny in the film. Uh, he, has, he does have brown magic. <laughs> and he can drink maple syrup faster than anybody else. <laughs> and has a hot hippie wife. Well, that's true. So, I mean, that's, that's getting into his to his character. But uh, that's such a weird. That, it's that's so, funny. so yeah, weird to the whole. <laughs> like the only one that seems to have, be in any type of relationship yeah. is a guy that. I mean, I'm guessing they're not married, right? 
Well, they're not. They mention no, it throughout the film. But yeah. let's let's get into the film scene by scene. Let's go through. The, let's go through the. Uh, let's go through the film. Talk about some of the stuff we like. Some of the stuff we 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 didn't like. And and let's just talk about the film. Let's not. Uh, let's not. We'll, we'll delve into the characters a little bit later on. But let's uh, let's get started on it. So the film starts out with three stoned teenagers driving down the road, and they are pulled over by Vermont Highway Patrol, the state troopers in Vermont. And of course, the kids are freaking out. They can't figure out, you know, what to do, what to do with their stash, what to do. So the one kid eats all the mushrooms. Well, he eats all the, <laughs> the weed first. All the weed and the mushrooms. Then he eats all the mushrooms. And then he, the, the, the guy brings out another stash or something else that he drops out the window. Was that... Uh, I think it's more weed. I think that was just weed, yeah. yeah. It was more weed? Yeah. Because oh, okay. they smoke it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so they, they wound up getting pulled over by the cops, and uh, I absolutely love this part. It's like, did you say, yes, sir, or yeah, sure? Well, I, I said, yeah, <laughs> sure, but what I meant was, yes, sir. Where are you kids going? <laughs> We're heading over to border for some french fries and gravy, <laughs> sir. Some poutine. <laughs> Almost. Canada, huh? Almost made it. <laughs> I... I, I and then they just like disappear. Yeah. And, yeah. Just, and then come back and start and over again as if it, as if I had never yeah. pulled him over again. I love that where he just like starts. <laughs> He's already pulled over. <laughs> yeah. He can't pull over any farther. I honestly think this is one of like the classic opening scenes of any comedy. It's okay. a cold open. I'll, I'll, I'll put it up there. Like, because I really love it. I, I love that. I love the whole thing, but the way it starts with not, not focusing on the main characters and starting with these other characters is very, like, interesting how they introduce the super troopers into it. And it just, yeah, I mean, it's like hilarious, you know, situation and. Because it's a, it's it, they also start so serious too. Yeah, you, yeah exactly. When you when you see it, and if you didn't like, know that the whole thing was going right. to be a comedy, they do start off at that like, first. Oh, these part. guys, you, these, these guys, guys are serious. serious. Yeah, yeah. like they're they're, they're, gonna, they're pulling these guys over. <laughs> they're going to get in trouble. You know, yeah. we're going to see some cop work done here, and then. You but see no, them drive off, and they yeah. disappeared, and then they're back behind them, and then yeah. they pull up. And I love, you, I love that the cop car just goes around the the, the outside yeah. too. <laughs> it's not like it goes past on the other on on onto the left. It drives. They're mm-hmm. already on the shoulder, oh, yeah. so he drives more on the shoulder to go around them. <laughs> like yeah. that, just that you just don't see that. It you also know? puts you in the perspective of the the stoners. Like yeah. you know, what would you do in that situation? It, you know, obviously, be really freaked out. So. Yeah, it's it's a great. You know why I pulled you over, son? No, 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 sir. Littering, 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 littering and uh, littering and and I love how they Spooky. focus in on the guy <laughs> and there's children laughing in his head. <laughs> yeah, those just, little touches are good. He's just freaking yeah. out in the back, littering and smoking the reefer. <laughs> Oh man, so many. It was. I, it's, I mean, I was going to get into this later, but this it's such a quotable movie. It's. I mean, oh yeah, it absolutely it, is. Every like a, scene has yeah. something quotable yeah. in it, and it's, that's uh, one of the things that makes it so memorable. Seriously, every almost every scene has yeah. Has and obviously, one. the reason that people voted for this is oh, because yeah. it it is that memorable. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people could have went with Coneheads, mm. which is a serviceable comedy, but. uh it was picked by Jay, so I suggest I I have a sneaking suspicion that no one will ever vote for anything voted by for in Jay. due time, in not due time. by Jay. <laughs> in due time, it's only the third show. I was kind of hoping for for a little bit of Monty Python because it's nice to talk yeah. about Monty Python. It's kind of like where it's, it's kind of like where sketch comedy. I mean, I'm not going to say started, but it's where a lot of sketch comedy derives I'd its humor say from. There. I can't remember too much that would be before Monty Python. Uh, you, um, you you had your your hour long specials like your stuff like that. That was all sketch comedy yeah, but, too. But your not Carol into, Burnett not shows. reaching into like the movie stage. Like, no, right. Like Monty Python the first, did yeah. with, with they were probably like, the Brian first first to screen. Holy I would Grail. say. Yeah, we'll come back to Monty Python. Yeah, we'll come. We'll, we'll, Mark, you'll get another we'll, chance. We'll, we'll do yeah, comedies we'll again. Work. You'll get to nominate it. Yeah, but yeah, that that opening scene is definitely memorable, and it and it's one of those things that like you always think about. Like, is that cop just fucking with me? Like and yeah. it's very possible that yeah that cop is <laughs> yeah. just fucking with you we, yeah we it puts a slant on that yeah <laughs> like it, like he gets into it later when when they do the meow and, and stuff like that right. but yeah. like when a cop stops you and you're like you're trying he's being so serious but is he like in his head thinking okay I'm pulling over another person. Let me see how much I can fuck with <laughs> exactly. this person because he's sitting there as nervous as can be. So this this scene is completely broken up by broken lizard <laughs> by a, bing. a speeding white Miata that comes flying past and just shouts <laughs> and goes flying past the cops 
Mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> and the cops arrest the three kids, put them in the back, and they take off after this this uh, Miata convertible. And that is when we get the that that great thirty eight special uh, opening credits. Yeah. But Dana, and that's dun, another dun, fake out dun, too. That dun, part. Dun, I mean, dun, 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 they keep dun. you on your toes with that opening there. Yeah, they do. Uh, so they they're, they chase the vehicle down, and it stops at a bar. And the guy gets out, and he's got a bandana on and a long wig. And Wait, cut don't, off we, sleeve. don't we see the other trooper like trying to put like? He's fishing. Uh, he's got, yes, he's, he's fishing. Yeah, he's right. fishing. So he's yes. like getting the dummy yeah. out of the front of the car and putting it into the side. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason he's sticking it right out in the window, right. and the Miata drives by and takes off the head. Just more evidence that these guys are not your average yeah. police officers. So by the time they get to the bar, the driver gets out. He runs into the bar. They run in after him. Guns pointed at him. And they're screaming at him. Get down on the ground. Get down on the ground. <laughs> and they find out. That it is one of the members of their squad, and it's his day off. So he decided to fuck with them. <laughs> and he lines up five shots, and he does them all. <laughs> I, I actually, at, at that stage, I actually really did think that they were all going to have the shots. It just seemed like that was going to be the way yeah, that those cops Isn't it weird were. how, like, Thorny, most of all than, than the rest of them, always flirts with the idea of playing it straight. It's like he wants to, but he gets dragged in yeah, by the rest yeah, yeah. of them because he is their supervisor. He yeah, is the lieutenant. Yeah, right. There is Brian Cox, who uh, we'll talk about later how we're baffled that he's in this film. Um, <laughs> but there's Brian Cox, who's the captain. But then there's Thorny, who's who's the sergeant or lieutenant. And then there's the there's the rest of them who are just officers. You know what? I, 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 I kind of saw that, but like he's almost in everything that's going wrong. You see him there. You know, when they're, um, they're always the together. shaving, the shaving cream yeah. incident, you know, he's like right there doing it. So, well, that's his rookie. He's yeah, training. I, I, I understand. So he but, has to lead yeah, the hazing on the, his yeah, rookie. Yeah. The hazing has to be there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but there always has to be somebody there that's going to kind of keep things moving. Right. On the straight and straight ish. <laughs> <laughs> little wobbly line, but it's somewhat straight. But, it's, you know, they definitely have a good time and you can tell that what the, I mean, cuts, well, we're not going to cut too fast, but like, they have a great idea just to keep on shitting with those kids and for that's the right. guy today oh. <laughs> who's off to have a good time that's gonna still, mess you up that's one of my favorite you're things. already high and something like that's happening the kid is in the ah, back and he's so licking good. he's first off he's licking a oh, glass he's out of his you mind. know how disgusting that glass yeah he's not like how many tastes it's like snozberries <laughs> and they're not cleaning that glass and then of course Mac the, the guy driving the Miata jumps into the jumps into the vehicle and it's one of my favorite things and I'll still say it to people when they get in my car and I'm about to do something crazy, I just go, you boys like Mexico? <laughs> that was on my friend's album there. On yeah. the CD. <laughs> uh, it's it's such a great opening to the film and it really sets and the just tone. just their faces too. Yeah. You, you see their faces the moment he's like, they hear the gunshots, he yeah. runs out. Yeah. Like the, your first thought, you, in your back of the car, your highest high as anything yeah. you must be like you're shitting what? your brains yeah what, what's going on it's just like and then he hops in their car yeah. like and you can't get out you're in the back of a cop car <laughs> it really yeah. is you know the perfect opening it just sets oh, the yeah. it sets the tone so For the whole movie yep and we also missed the character while it does set up thorny foster uh rabbit mm-hmm. and mac it doesn't set up the fifth uh the fifth police officer he come too soon after. farva but farva you know, he's there he's on the radio Unit 91, come in, Unit 91. Don't call me Unit 91, radio. <laughs> I do like that. that in- Don't call me radio, Unit 91. But even still, from that alone, you can kind of tell his character. Yeah, you know? just, just a little bit. Totally. He's a frustrated, like, <laughs> like yeah. he wants, wants to, be, to take the job seriously, yeah, he wants to take but the he's job such a schmuck. But yeah, but the second he gets he any, also wants to be part of the group. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But the second he gets any actual power, he screws. Oh, I yeah. think I think Farva <laughs> is actually the 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 completion of what happens when something me and Jay talked about. Seth Rogen's uh, character in. Uh, Observe and report. Right. Actually becomes a police officer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> to understand. Very much in the same vein. To understand that, go watch yeah. Observe and Report. Watch mm-hmm. Super Troopers. And then, and then then you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's, that, that's that's the thing that we're, that we're introduced there. Now, let's just go through the plot of the story. Because actually what I want to talk about is just some of, some of our favorite scenes. More so I want to go through the whole plot. So the, really the plot of the story the is. Not important. <laughs> no, I mean it's a little bit important. It's it's about these 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 state troopers, these highway patrolmen. They're they're going to be shut down soon due to budget cuts. The governor's going to be making budget cuts. Their particular 
like unit, just their unit, not, not like the right. whole lot, right? But not the whole thing. Unit, yeah. Uh, and they're in constant competition for funding with the local police, which is the Spurberry Police Department, and that also creates some shenanigans. Not just between them, uh, it also creates shenanigans between them and the Spurberry Police. So they're 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 vying for funding, and they they come across a dead body, uh, and the dead body leads them to to a drug bust uh after they pull over a truck driver they find that there is a a load of weed inside of this 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 fake soap company truck driver mr galifanukas galifanukas yeah (laughs) galifanakis and they find and on it is a sticker of a chimpanzee jerking off with bananas shooting out of his penis and that's johnny chimpo the Afghan Afghanistanimation character. <laughs> it was the same sticker that was tattooed on the woman who was dead in the Winnebago. I mean, just talking about timing as well. What well, you said, two thousand and one was when this movie came out. Yeah, Afghanistan was kind of a backwater at the time. Now until- this is prior. To, this came yeah, out exactly. prior to nine eleven. Exactly. <laughs> You're talking about what? Depending on the months. You're talking about a few months later. Afghanistan is on the map for everybody to know where Afghanistan is because of 9-11. Actually, when I was rewatching it, that was something I thought about. I was like, holy shit, they mentioned the Taliban in here. Yeah. Probably before most of even the United States knew the even Taliban knew was. what the Taliban yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> and and they were joking around and yeah. kidding and, and making fun of them. Yeah, I thought that was that was pretty funny. Uh, real, yeah. So they, um, yeah. How, how did we get there? Way to bring us there, Rob. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. Always here to keep it real, I guess. <laughs> Should I take a knee? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the national anthem's playing. <laughs> take a knee, Rob. <laughs> so <Not> my anthem. <laughs> <laughs> what is Australia's national anthem? Uh, Put them on the spot there. Yeah, oh, I know. Man. Now you have. Um, Gee, see, I, I know. Oh, say, can you see by no. the dawn's early light? Say, I know no. mine. I know it's um. <laughs> uh, Australians, all let us rejoice, for we are young and free, with golden soil and wealth for toil. Our land is good by sea. All right, that's that. You don't need our to keep land going. Abounds in nature's <laughs> gifts. Okay, very good. So nice. Nature's gifts. It's all yeah. desert and deadly animals. What what gifts are these? The reefs around. No uh, one. Beautiful you know, beaches koalas. that you don't have to pay for. You know why Australia's never been invaded? Because everyone's like, is there armor that keeps spiders out? And no. We're not going you know why? You know why there's so many deadly programs where they'll say, Australia's deadliest snakes or Australia's deadliest sharks? It's because we don't want you assholes coming and ruining our country. We'll show you all these it's wonderful brilliant. programming that says, oh, yeah, look how deadly my country is. And therefore, plenty of Australians enjoy that country and grow up, grow up to be... Absolutely amazing people it's without true. having to be influenced by anybody else. That's it's what the Crocodile Hunter was all about. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was, it was all about, you know, everybody carries a great big knife, you know? I mean, yeah. I hear, yeah, you, you would be surprised. I hear that yeah, but do your, maybe once a week. But do your, state troopers, like that. Wow. do your state troopers play meow with you? No. Meow? No. <laughs> No, they don't so, play that. I, I will give you that. You have better state troopers than us. So after the dead body in the Winnebago, and after the uh, a- after they they find the pot, they make this connection between them, and they try to work the Spurberry Police Department to 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 work together in the investigation. Uh, it always falls through because the because the bad blood between them runs too deep, and you find out that it actually runs far deeper than just this current crew. It's run between both captains and even deeper than them. It's just always been a competition between them. They'll never work together. Uh, Spurberry Police employs Ursula, who is a cute blonde who Foster falls for as they go to have sex in the in the Winnebago, which is in the Spurberry Police Department impound. They stumble upon more. Or marijuana, thus connecting the two investigations. So it becomes the goal for our heroes, the, the, the Vermont Highway Patrol, to eventually get their hands on the Winnebago, blow the lid wide open on the whole thing, impress the governor, get the funding, and stay open. And of course, the shenanigans that they get into trying to accomplish this and constantly failing at be doing this. Every time he says shenanigans, I think we should all take a drink. <laughs> it is one of my, it is, it might even be my favorite scene in the entire no, film. The I would agree with you on that. Is the shenanigans. Yeah. It's in the intro for this. I had to fit it in there, and I couldn't even cut it down. I had to leave the whole scene in it, <laughs> and that's that's basically the whole story. Now, <laughs> uh, just just going through it, the characters: Thorny, 
who, who we've talked about a little bit. Thorny is extremely interesting. First off, they never land on a nationality for the character in the film. Yeah, uh, the Spurberry police they, always, they, they, they order, Mexican they or, order tacos and chalupas yeah. and chinchillas from yeah. him, which a chinchilla isn't a, <laughs> isn't a food. It's a, it's a hyperactive, a rodent, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a hyperactive animal that looks like a cross between a gerbil and a rabbit. <laughs> and, and then also other people refer to him as, uh, from Arabia. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah they, they assume that he would know who Johnny Chimpo is yeah. since he's from Afghanistan. <laughs> Stand because he's from over there, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we refer to him as Brown, <laughs> but yeah, he, and he does refer to himself as Brown. Yeah, that was Brown just Magic he refers to himself as that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we know that he's skilled at drinking maple syrup. We know that he's the ringleader of of these idiots. And let's while just he say tr- that's wrong first, let's just go to the maple syrup. <laughs> I, I I I don't even enjoy it really that much on my pancakes, interesting fact in the but- film. They tried to use thickened uh, iced tea. At first, but it made too many bubbles and it still poured too quick and didn't look quite right. So what they decided to do was far away scenes. It is thickened iced tea. So when they're drinking from far away, it's thickened ice cl- iced tea. When it's close up, especially when it's on Thorny Thorny's lips, he is chugging real maple oh. syrup straight mm. from the bottle. That's commitment. I was gonna yeah. say because you can tell it, it's legit. It looks legit. It's yeah. coming out He's a director who punished himself instead no. <laughs> of punishing his actors. That's the best part. It is. Now it's going on that, then does that mean that when later on, when f- other movies, I mean, they've done other movies, of course, and I'm sure we'll get into that at some point. Are they chugging beer? Are they chugging beer in Beer Fest? Mm. Not in that last scene, because uh, if you look, spoil it for me. Come on, the yeah. boot <laughs> is is filled with CGI yeah. beer. Ah. Uh. It's CG, but not because of of the fact that it's beer in it, and that's what he's drinking. Because of the speed when mm-hmm. he gets the eye of the Jew that he's drinking it, <laughs> that they they had to like just make it fake so that way it, it looked like he was chugging it faster than anyone else can humanly chug it. Because you know the uh, spark of David came yeah. into him, and he got the eye of the Jew, and he had to drink it down real fast. We'll talk about beer fest <laughs> later on. So. That's that, that's Thorny's character. Now, Thorny is is constantly torn between his job. He does absolutely love his job and and his girlfriend, who he does have a son with. And uh, with the shutdown, his girlfriend would like him to come work at her store with him, which is a head shop. <laughs> which I and, find and I'm not hilarious. gonna lie, when I was watching this movie, I had no idea what a head shop was. Oh, okay. No. It's a it's it's a place where you sell marijuana paraphernalia, yeah, but do, not marijuana itself. I did <laughs> get that once I looked it up, but I had no idea at the beginning. That so, that was my childhood. Right there. And I love that line that Thorny <laughs> says, where he's like, he's like, retired cop goes and works at his girlfriend's head shop. That's too sitcom for me, baby. <laughs> uh, and then. And then we get and when we find out that him and his girlfriend are swingers, which is a nice little interesting like fold that they add to his character. You can almost see that when they're at the baseball game and she's sitting in there. He's like she's wearing a bikini top and right. like he's talking about our son and you know like joking around. It's just you you could basically see that the type of relationship that yeah. they have is that loose like very free love. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's different. Yeah, and then we come to Foster. Uh, so I'll, I'll get uh, Foster is. I, they really don't give him much more of a character than he's the guy that falls in love with the girl. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of like the dopey. Yeah, I mean, he's like, the dopey guy that gets you, the girl. If you think of this movie like the Police Academy movies, which I can see like parallels with, he's kind of like the Steve Gutenberg. Like he's he's as close to a leading man as you're gonna get. Which yeah, that's <laughs> for this true. movie, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, and uh, that's that, that's really, I mean, he he does have some funny scenes, but he's not quite as funny as as the rest of them in I this say he film doesn't have as many hilarious moments he they gave him more like the romantic subplot yeah him. right right and and i that, i mean the flashing funny. scene i think was probably his funniest yes you know he's where so, he jumps in front of the window and jumps back he's right. so bulgy he's like a muse <laughs> oh the humanity <laughs> <laughs> he's a disgusting creature he certainly is ma'am <laughs> And uh, that's another favorite line of mine that Ursula says when she when she has the uh, the bullhorn on. Bend over, touch your toes, and I'll show you where the wild goose goes. <laughs> uh, and then we have the rookie rabbit, uh, who again is a lot like Foster. He's 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 a little bit forgettable, but he is he's the one that I would say has the most clear. Who who Farva is his, is is his clear antagonist? I would say. Um, I mean, you, I you see them almost, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You see them almost get into the fight in the, in right. the the garage. I mean, 
Yeah, you're right. I think I think because he's the rookie, <laughs> but I think he accepts that he's the rookie for the other guys. Right. But, but he not, doesn't accept right. he's a rookie for Fava. Because right. Fava's a fucker. Because yeah, yeah. Fava's just he's just one of those ones that he's going to try and you know where everybody else will pour, put shaving cream on him and and stick him in a locker. Fava's probably the one that will probably try and. Put toilet paper up his butt, yeah. light it, and see how fast he can run. Saying you're you know, going to light my I'm, tape on fire? I'm saying I'm going to light your ass on fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you smell pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also think he's like the younger version of Mac. You know, he's, he's just... Yeah, you know. I, I, I think he's more of the younger version of, like, Thorny. I think because he's training from Thorny, he yeah. has a lot of, like... Or there's a lot of Thorny yeah, in there's, him. Yeah, I mean, it's him going against Thorny in the maple syrup, right. you know? I mean, and he's quite horny. Yeah. And, oh, and obviously... So that was a great scene. Yeah. I need this! Hey, Arla, why don't you get on uh, Uncle Rabbit's lap. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we have Mac. Mac is the wildest of the bunch. Um, he's also the quickest to temper, uh, and he's the quickest to physical action as well throughout the entire film. He's he's the fighter. He's the he's the loudest, and he's the one that's willing to take things too Just far the craziest, and yeah. beyond. Yeah, it's uh, the craziest of them all. And I think I, I think that works. That that works well. You have to have. You know, two ends of the spectrum where you have to have where Favre is the wet blanket. Mac is is the guy that he's the he's the captain of 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 the defense. You know, like he's the captain. of the squad. He's the guy who doesn't mind getting yeah. roughing things up every now and then um, and is actually happiest when things go to a physical violent level. <laughs> he's happy when there's a sexy billboard around, too. That's true. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and we also know that he enjoys autoerotica asphyxiation. <laughs> <laughs> because there's there's a scene they where they should have held that a little longer. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of scenes in this that went on oh, longer yeah. and yeah. they, they cut it down. Outtakes, I'm sure. They needed Got this the film to be they needed this film to be at a tight ninety minutes or else the comedy would have worn on you. Um yeah, and that's it, true. And it is I think it's eighty seven minutes, I wanna say. It's a little over, Actually I think it's hour it's 40. It's an hour forty ish, yeah. No, yeah. well, all right. So yeah, so it's uh so it's Right around, uh, right around. It's the, as long as it can get. Yeah, <laughs> essentially, it's a hundred minutes. Maybe like this. Yeah, yeah. it's a hundred minutes even. So, uh, but yeah, it's about as long as you could probably do this film. I think they they cut it to a nice level. And then of course we come to Farva, the biggest asshole of them. Um, he's not. He's obviously not as clever as them. He's not as funny as them. Uh, he and, and inadvertently it's funny. Yeah, he's 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 so not funny that it is funny. His yeah. failings when he, he tries to be, to be funny, funny, right? But he he's pushing too hard to be right. funny. He's he's Chicken that fucker. Yes. Right, he's that guy that tries to. That he always goes too far. Uh, the people yeah. who we call chicken fucker are actually Heffner's parents <laughs> in <laughs> real life. Those are the people. <laughs> so doesn't he? Doesn't he make up some joke where like, oh, I, I think we should take take Viagra yes. and, and, and we pull him over like- with raging boners. <laughs> right, I'm like he just no. he doesn't know what's funny. Yeah. He, yeah. he 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 he. he borders that that line of psychopathic and cheeky where yeah. it's like he you want to be cheeky but you don't want to be fucking psycho and he goes full psycho on everything yeah. uh and to to an annoying degree to everybody else where no one wants to put up with him at all and then the the final person is brian cox uh <laughs> and for some reason i right i they I, probably needed a name a name to be in it to uh you know i think maybe he was impressed with what they had done before this which we'll talk about in the in the later segment mm-hmm. and you know they might have garnered something and he might have also had a contract with yeah. fox at the time because fox Searchlight is the one that picked this film up and yeah. wanted to distribute it. Favor, but he really been. commits. Yeah, he does. I mean, yeah, he really commits he to this role. Boys, but I think he has fun in the role. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, like, well, yeah. When, when, when you, I when believe you, that when, you, when me shit turns purple. But when you like see drunk, drunk, th- those drunk scenes <laughs> at the end oh, there, exactly. like when he's on the when he's on the front lawn, like he. Is he not drunk at that stage? He has to have been to act like that. Two-time Navy champ. Yeah. Bag him. Tag him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then you see him. He he, he just falls down. They yeah. catch him. Like I, uh, you know, he definitely. Had I love what he's doing. I believe that to me. Shit turns purple. Smells like rainbow sherbet. <laughs> Does it sound like that when I say it? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all these 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 five six characters all lead into incredibly hilarious scenes and shenanigans. So uh, I want to go through. I just want everybody to to just. Tell me what your favorite scene is, your most, your funniest scene, and we'll start with Jay. Oh boy, there's so many. Um, I think the one that we, yeah, gosh, I, I, probably the 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 sexy what, French couple that they pulled over, and, and you know, German. 
Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> We're so used to driving on the autobahn. autobahn. <laughs> oh. it, it, it was just so much fun. He has the French tickler. Yeah. He's tickling <laughs> he's, his dick. <laughs> he's trying to make him stop hooking up with the girl, and he's like, and he's like, he's like, like literally harassing the shit out of her, and she's <laughs> loving it, like you know, grabbing her boobs and everything, kissing her, and, and a lot of swingers in this movie. It, yeah. Like, I didn't see that coming. That was the first time when I was kind of like, whoa, okay. So, and, and, uh, I was I, a little I surprised that, that they showed. I'm like, yeah. they, I'm like, that was like, okay. Oh, that was a little pushing a little There was bit, something but, going on there. But, you could see that when they kept flashing back to like her. But it's kind of like a two part for me. Cause like later on when you show Thorny and his wife with them, <laughs> That was that was perfect. Where we got like, the name for the cocktail? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, all right. Who wants a mustache ride? It was. It was I want fun. I want fun. I want fun too. I want fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so I loved the the, uh, the little sexual comedy thrown in with it. Yeah, and I I did kind of I actually love the scene where they're smoking weed with the uh, with the German guy, and and he's talking about you know the uh, Johnny Chimpo, yeah. and and he's just like he's like and the butler is trying to tell him that you you must not be disrespectful, you must respect the <laughs> Taliban overlords, and he is just does not care. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what is your favorite scene? I like meow, meow, like, yeah, the meow uh, scene. I I I it seems so flawless is what i i think the way he does it like that is a scene that if you could it can seem very canned can seem very forced oh, you know they probably did but, a lot of takes oh yeah they probably did <laughs> they probably did but 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 to their benefit it, it seems so i know the way he says meow you can almost you can almost hear yourself being confused by the way he's saying it you can understand <laughs> right. that he's like yeah. Did he really just say meow? I mean, after a couple of times, you're understanding that he is, and you know that he's saying meow. But but if you can imagine yourself that man in the car, right. and you're hearing the cop there, and you're hearing him <laughs> say these things, and you're like, did he, he really just say meow? Right. And this guy <laughs> had I mean, the balls to say it. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, are you saying meow? Yeah. Am I saying can, meow? Yeah. Am I talking yeah. like a cat? Am, Am I, I like, hopping around all <laughs> nimbly bimbly? Am I looking out of a dish? <laughs> Am I, I drinking milk from a saucer? I love later when Farah's like, yeah, when you guys say pussy all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's, but, but it's like not, when, not, when he not looks over, he, <laughs> he looks over and the other one That's, is like, you can see the belly his laugh. His belly is laughing. His yeah. belly yeah. laugh <laughs> is like, and he's on top of the car counting how many meows. And then, and then you, you can see he's at eight. He's like, he's like, Meow, meow. <laughs> and, and them laughing at it like makes it funnier. Yeah. Right? An interesting fact about that scene: he actually says "meow" eleven times. Ooh. Unless they're not counting the times that he actually specifically refers to "meow", meow. is what. Okay. Am I saying "meow"? Yeah. Yeah. So that might not count. Yeah. But I, I don't know. But yeah, he does. That say probably it. doesn't make sense because he's, he's like here, yeah. he's counted as only like the. The times uh, that he says, yeah, uh, listen to him, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do love that scene. Um, still not my favorite. Mark, what's your favorite? So many scenes. <laughs> um, this is one of those movies where like every, every scene could be a favorite. Um, I do love the opening. Um, but I would have to say probably the scene in the fast food restaurant with the, uh, the large Farva. I have a liter, liter of cola. cola. Yeah. A liter of cola. <laughs> that, what? That just liter, it's up. French for give me some fucking cola. Yeah. I just remember <laughs> seeing that in the theaters and just dying laughing. Yeah. Like, you, you just don't, you don't expect somebody, yeah. let alone saying it in the metric system. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and nobody asked for a liter of anything. It's certain, <laughs> certainly that, memorable yeah, because yeah. you can go into a fast food restaurant, order a liter of cola, and, and the person behind the counter will oh, probably yeah, laugh yeah, yeah. and yeah. understand what you're saying. <laughs> and then the guy telling them that he's, you know, they're not going to spit in his food. Right. Yeah. And he goes, you know, is, is this it's, look like spit it's to you? It's for a cop. <laughs> yeah. Does this look like spit to you? Don't ah, spit. <laughs> yeah. um, and Don't then, of course, the, the ending of the no, scene. No, I'm just telling he, him that so he yeah. makes it extra good. <laughs> yeah. The ending of the scene where he jumps over the counter is a nice. Right. Which is a nice touch because we know that throughout the film they constantly mention that Farber's been suspended for the yeah. incident on the school bus. You don't see that. You don't the see very that end. until the credits very, yeah. that we we see why he was suspended. But we do get a a, a bit of that anger and that problem with him. <laughs> yes. I also love the scene with Farber where he gets arrested by the Spurberry police, which happens right after the the, the fast food scene, mm. and they're delousing him <laughs> with confection sugar with powdered sugar. It's powdered sugar. Yeah, it's delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> He's like That's a great the, the lice hate the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> they're all trying to be serious to make it sound like they're really like being serious on him and he's like it's delicious <laughs> it's delicious <laughs> my favorite scene is right after they finish smoking weed right after rabbit 
comes back after taking the German guy to the jail cell. He's covered in, in the German guy's wife's lipstick. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the captain, uh, Brian Cox loses his mind and he just says, you guys gotta knock these shenanigans off. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> talks you would about, have guessed that your favorite scene was shenanigans. And, and, and he talks, he talks about Farvra and how his shenanigans went too far. And he's like, yeah, but. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. His shenanigans are, are cruel and, and evil. Not really shenanigans at all. Evil shenanigans. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. Hey, Farbra, what's that restaurant you like to go to? You know, all the goofy shit, shit on the wall. <laughs> shenanigans? You guys talking about shenanigans? Yeah. Talking about shenanigans, right? <laughs> oh, 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 put you, put those away. The fact that he says it again is what makes it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't just say it once. He's talking about shenanigans. Yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely and my favorite hand scene. The, hand yeah. the, hand <laughs> the pistols to him. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I will mention as well. My, one of my other favorite parts is the the photo scene where they're in front of the mar- the the ba- uh, bales of marijuana. And like they're all standing oh, yeah. gang and the mayor of and then the mayor, and he, he's like holding the shotgun. Yeah, I, I love that scene. That's like, it's it's yeah, like it's let's good. do this. Farva, Farva chucks him the shotgun and he catches it. And for this is the mayor of Spurberry, and he he catches it and he holds it in like the ready position, yeah. and he's just like spread it on. Yeah. That's like the only scene he's in, pretty much. I mean, it, yeah, apart from the like the the ending where uh, not the ending, but the uh, that meet and greet with the uh, with, right. with, with Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> which is something yeah. we're going to get to in our very next segment so stay tuned as we break down uh, everything we know about the behind the scenes and about Broken Lizard themselves and nice Super segue Troopers right too. there welcome to Dippus can I take your order give me a uh, double bacon cheeseburger double bacon cheeseburger it's for a cop what the hell's that all about you going to spin it now no I was just telling him that so he makes it good big there Big bear. That look like spit to you? Yeah. Damn it, you burger punk! You son of a bitch! So, welcome back to our behind the scenes segment, uh, where we talk about everything that we know about the film behind the scenes. And since Rob took us into it and he was discussing that Linda Carter is in this film, Wonder Woman, she actually plays the governor. She is in a very extremely minor scene. But little cameo. It's Linda Carter. She's there. And, and she says some words. So I mean, <laughs> she says some paid. words. She got paid. <laughs> uh, we know that Brian Cox got paid. Brian Cox is in this film, which I still find amazing. I found nothing online actor. <laughs> about how Brian Cox, the original Hannibal Lecter, wound up in this film. I have no clue. He had, had to do it because it was fun. Maybe, I mean, yeah, it had to be something. I mean, I, 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 you he got those been, actors been that will take a job. Serious, yeah. yeah, you got those actors that will just take that job because it's completely different to everything else that they've been doing. Yeah. You know, maybe it's not about the money. It could I mean, be. You know, a, it could actor. have been a studio. It could have um, been a studio. Thing. Could have been, but honestly, but, but he looks like he's having a blast. Exactly. The, the drunk <laughs> scenes make it look like he had fun while this was going yeah. on. Yeah. Right. You know? like he had a gun to his head for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm still baffled by that. Uh, and then in Rob's favorite scene, the meow scene, at the time was probably a young and up and coming stand up comedian who they may have known from their time in New York, the guys from Broken Lizard. Jim Gaffigan, yeah, who is quite famous hot pockets, now. Hot pockets. Yeah. But I actually don't like Jim Gaffigan stand up. I like Jim Gaffigan stand up. I don't like his like uh, TV or TV commercials. So, yeah, TV I think he went too commercial yeah. uh, to to be to, uh, right. pun, but no he puns. went too commercial with that. Whereas, puns, Ross <laughs> got them. <laughs> but with the but with his stand up, I I do really like some of his stand-up i think he I don't hate it i mean no nah. yeah it's decent no i mean i it's clean <laughs> I, I i i think the the few times i've listened to jim gaffigan stand-up i get really annoyed at how every punchline has to come down to this and like he gets like that high voice yeah. and it's like it's like his but he uses like that it, that's his signature right. i just like right. when he talks about himself but it's like how sam sam kinison's signature was like every punchline had to be <laughs> how he talks about himself being fat. Like, That's true. I, don't know. I respect and I, that. And how he uh, <laughs> has a thing with food, yeah. Him and... Yeah. It's it's almost like him and Louis C.K. have almost identical topics to their stand-up. They just like... It's like Jim Gaffigan. Two totally different uh, approaches. Jim Gaffigan, yeah, right. Two completely different approaches. It's like Jim Gaffigan is the cleaned up, yeah. like, yeah. fresh laundry version of yeah. Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. 
but he's he's also in this film uh and i, th- I thought that was interesting as well because it's like it wasn't like he was famous at the time right? no, he was not no, famous was in 2001 young, yeah. very early so, he's got a full head of hair and everything yeah, exactly. i can only assume that uh broken lizard was was working out of new york as a sketch comedy crew at the time yeah, they, they before had they made this. him in the, the, it, the sets that and, had to be how they how they got to, hey, come to be know on him. our movie you know take you a couple of days of shooting and absolutely so uh, he he will be back for the sequel as well. Yeah, so I'm in the trailer. The, yeah, the oh, Super okay. Trooper sequel. No, I didn't see that, but which will uh, be coming out April twentieth, twenty eighteen. So four twenty, twenty eighteen. Which they make very apparent in that trailer. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it it's is. It's like, wait, is this the name of the movie? It's like Super. Yeah, you know, no, they're like, trooper. no, we're coming out four twenty. You 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 get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know where we're going. We, we from. know our audience. <laughs> Johnny Chimpo is back <laughs> with a vengeance. <laughs> we do know their audience. Yeah. So. Uh, Broken Lizard themselves, uh, how they got started, me and Mark have talked about it a little bit. They actually made a movie that got a lot of bu- – first off, they made a short film that got a lot of buzz. Um, and that was in the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival, uh, which garnered them uh, – well, That's a, a big one. Right. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean some – some, <laughs> It, it it got their got next some recognition. It got yeah. their next film into some for the next one, yeah. Which was which was Puddle Cruisers, which is a film that was that was filmed entirely at Colgate College. Super low budget. And super low budget. But Colgate College is actually where they all met. That's where they all went to school. That's right. where this comedy troupe was was invented. It's a lot of those like these. I mean, I'm- Chandra Sarkar was actually he was part of uh, of of a theater crew, and one of his instructors came up to him and and told him to start a a sketch comedy crew. Um, after graduation, they they all decided to together move to New York and take their sketch comedy on the road. And there were six members at the time. They eventually lost one. And then it became the core five that uh, we see in their films and everything today. So here's so. my question. Maybe you can answer this, Dave. Since it's not interesting because they're a sketch comedy troupe, but yet all I know them from is, is movies. So right. did they They never did had they a TV show. Perform, but did they do live sketch yes. comedy? Okay. Yes. Live that's stand up and yeah. yep. they they improv have, and stuff like that. They do right? have a special yep. that's live, but I, I didn't see it. So. Yep. They, they, perform, they performed in, in New York. They did that for a couple years. And actually, uh, they they decided that they had done everything they think they possibly could creatively in sketch comedy. Uh, they they weren't getting any big breaks or anything like that, and that's when they decided to start writing scripts. So that trying puddle, to break into film. I'm, I'm not I've puddle not cruisers. It. Puddle cruisers. There's I haven't seen it. Cruiser. So all right, it was but, actually but a film it, that was made. Was before it indie? This. Oh, yes. So it was indie. Extremely was it? indie. Oh, in I think it even was released. No, it showed at at, at Sundance. It, it never, it was never released. It was never came out in theaters, never, never was released on DVD until 2005 so after, after Super Troopers. Because okay. on the box, they even advertised, hey, the guy from, from the creators from of Super, Super Troopers. Yeah. Right. So uh, it kind of reminds me of the story of Kevin Smith, you know, with uh, the way he starts with his like early films mm-hmm. here in Jersey that led him into the bigger ones yeah, and stuff like, like that. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Clerks was. I would say Clerks, Clerks was, was far more widely received yeah. than Puddle Cruisers. More of a smash than, yeah, <laughs> yeah. than Puddle Cruisers. But almost the same sort of start, though. Like right. he, Very small. He yeah. had that small start, but it, it probably got the more mm-hmm. mainstream than the other one then. Absolutely. But obviously, it led into more for them. Right. And right. I, I just I want to say, you know, this is, when I'm watching the movie again, and I, I thought this before, this, I mean, this is essentially their first movie. I mean, it's their first big movie, Super Troopers, and they just come out the gate. It is yeah. such a self-assured movie and they you know and they calling themselves broken lizard and just it just ha- it's so you know it's like they're, they're a really solid group right out the gate and all their characters are very well defined and and actually to the point where every movie i saw them in after this i would compare you know compare each actor to to super troopers so that's yeah, true to the, the, the last one yeah so i'm like okay he's the leader and he's yeah. the, the rookie and he's and, a, and, 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 guy. and i did like that from yeah. i i do recall that from like seeing super troopers and then seeing um the island one. What was the island oh, one Club called? Dread. Club, Club Dread. Dread. Like, um, Jay plays... Chanda Sakar. Sm- yeah, yeah. Chanda Sakar. He plays <laughs> a smaller part, I feel like, right. in that movie than the rest of them. Yeah. He did, yeah. yeah. He's and, almost and off so, footings. Yeah. Like, so, like, you're like... He's, he played the beach bomb. Yeah. Like, he was, so you see him with a main his in the char- one and then not as a main in right. another one. You're like, okay. His well. character in Club Dread all, almost felt like his precursor character to to who he played in Beer Fest, mm-hmm. where he was very much a vagrant, very yep. much yeah. a... Uh, oh, yeah. That was... 
That was a weird, <laughs> weird, weird so, so in, uh, in my research for this film, uh, obviously everyone knows and I talk about it. I have a disease. I have to consume content. So if I watch Super Troopers and I own Beer Fest, I can't watch Super Troopers and not watch Beer Fest immediately afterwards. Beer Fest is also very funny. So my dad loves Beer Fest. After, <laughs> after doing that, I realized I prefer Beer Fest to Super Troopers. While Super Troopers is amazing and, and quotable, I think Beer Fest is out and out funnier. Mm-hmm. I think I, I think it has I think it has a lot I, more funny and is a lot more consistently mm-hmm. funny. Right. Like Super Troopers has and the cameos, funny like parts. God, the cameos. Uh, like like we just we went around and we all discussed funny parts. Mm-hmm. But there's scenes in the middle of the movie that are not always that funny. Some parts, that yeah. that lead into the story that go more of what's mm-hmm. going on. Whereas Beer Fest <laughs> has a lot more like consistent funny. It is. is more like pure comedy. Yeah. Just kind of like yeah. Comedy for comedy. It is, yeah. it is far more Hollywood than this one is. Yeah. It is, it is definitely. But, but you can see the, the, the progression. Right. You know, I do remember when I saw it in theaters, Beer Fest, thinking it was funnier than Super Troopers. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time, so I'd have to rewatch it's, it. But. It's, it's really, it, it's. I do remember. It's a though. treat. Yeah. <laughs> what an absolute treat. I love, I love Beer Fest. And, uh, while we talk about the Super Troopers sequel that will be coming out in, in April of 2018, um, what a long storied history that was, the development of that. Cause since, since after Super Troopers ended, they've always said they were working on a sequel. Uh, it wasn't confirmed until 2012 that it, that it was going to be filmed. And then even then they were still cagey on it about like whether, when it was coming out. It had gone through so many different types of stories. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a prequel taking place in the 1970s starring all of their fathers, which I didn't like that. I was like, you mean all of their fathers were also and Vermont Michelle, Highway Patrol? Yeah, that, no. yeah. that wouldn't have made sense. Yeah. Right. And there was well, talk of I could age- see them being a prequel where well, maybe them learning them right. when they first came to the Highway Patrol. But then- and they, but by, by that point, this film came out in 2001. That was 2012. They've yeah. already aged too far to yeah. be Unless able to. Unless doing the Wet Hot American Summer kind of thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes too far. But yeah. then they even talked about having Brian Cox back in it as himself. Yeah. But they would try to do age regression and stuff like that. And I was like, wait a minute. You're going to tell me that Broken Lizard has the same budget as X-Men, The Last Stand, (laughs) or Benjamin Button? (laughs) No, they don't. They wound up scrapping that. And they went back to the drawing board so many times. Eventually, it, it wasn't until 2016 that the Indiegogo mm. showed up and the crowdfunding that, that, that actually is what wound up getting Super Troopers 2 made became a thing and they far surpassed it. Uh, it only took a matter of days for them to actually get the funding they needed. And they even came out with an Indiegogo video that said, Which is very funny. Every <laughs> dollar that we get above our mark goes into making this film better for you and people kept donating and they finally got a larger budget for super troopers 2 than they had with a studio for super troopers 1 that's amazing and now they're saying that uh those crowdsourcing things are like amazing amazing yeah i mean I, from my own podcast and my own research of that, a lot of the fan films use that, those oh, sorts yeah. of crowdsourcing right. platforms. You find um, a fan base. You know, you, you, if you, and you, if you it. do it right, <laughs> if you, if you do it right and, and you've got like a people that know who you are, you can be funded really, really well in those, those, those things. Like Indiegogo, I believe is like you can accept all or you can accept Right. Part of it. So even if you don't make your goal. Look. Yeah. Even if you don't make your goal. Mark, just look around this room. Look at how Star Wars has exploited me. (laughs) (laughs) I have given him so much of my money. (laughs) They've given you so much joy. And that's, they have. And that's what Indiegogo is. You enjoyed this. We want to make more. We don't have the money to do it. Help us help raise us. the money yeah. to do it. I'm always very cautious of these type of things because while I do want to give money to the things I love um, and I want to see more of it made, um, I also worry that there's also the type of person out there that's the cash grab and going to run oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And that the, both sides of the coin have happened. Um, so I got to really believe in the person. I've, I've, I've the funded money a couple to. of through for the fan film boys, a couple of right. uh through Kickstarter, and um, one of them was a Twilight Zone uh, film noir type movie. That being said, 
Uh, please go on to Super Movie Brothers uh, and make sure you follow us on and you uh, on Twitter and you give money to our Patreon. <laughs> I'm kidding. We do not have a Patreon. We don't ask for any money. We do this for free. Uh, <laughs> Mark is just like, can we exploit these people? <laughs> How much can we make? Uh-huh. The gears working here. <laughs> I need an addition. <laughs> I need a third basement. <laughs> Mark is actually the only person I know who has two basements. <laughs> basements. Yeah, that's well, it's split level. It's split yeah, yeah. You have a split a, level. Basement. You have a basement yeah. that is slightly subdermal, and then you have of <laughs> then the you have full dermal. Then he has the full <laughs> the, right, the full subterranean so basement. Place I can keep all my movies. <laughs> <laughs> all my shit. <laughs> so they have now said, uh, Broken Lizard, that they are now working on the teased pot fest. Mm. Okay, oh. so. Okay, so sort of like a beer fest, but for pot. Right. Remember the end. The, the oh, end of beer yes. fest was that yes. Willie like, Nelson came Willie out. Nelson, I wonder yes. if they were actually going to make that. Yep. Okay, so, that makes sense now. So now yeah. they're teasing that if Super Troopers well, does well enough, they make their money for it. They get the funding for for it. They will make a pot fest. Um, between beer fest and this, there was Slam and Salmon. Slam and Salmon. Now I want to go back just because I actually want to sh- give that movie a little bit of shout out because you know what? I watched it totally on a whim. Totally on a whim. Oh and, my god. Uh, you can hear Mark now. Isn't oh, okay, amazing? sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> fading, everyone. Um, sorry. I watched that movie totally on a whim with uh, a bunch of friends, and it ended up being pretty damn funny. Um, it, you know, it has no plot whatsoever, really, but... I don't know if anyone here has seen it. I have. It actually was pretty. I thought it was pretty funny. I remember when it it came. It wasn't even. It was in the theaters, but not for very long. It wasn't in a wide release either. It was in a selected release, smaller release. Um, I rented it on video on demand, like the first chance I could, because I loved. I love Broken Lizard. What do you think of it? Uh, I I enjoyed it, but it it definitely was not anywhere near mm-hmm. what uh better than Club Dread. I, yeah, <laughs> Club ex- Dread's pretty fucking I terrible. Think my expectations are pretty low. When yeah, I uh, Michael Clark Duncan. I I just didn't. <laughs> See, I'm so confused I'm, by Club Dread and yeah. the Scooby Doo movie. They seem similar. As, they are like, they came very like, same time. Yeah, didn't they? They I mean they're both set on islands yeah. with young kids and. I, I mean, they're both I've got young kids at home, so I'm watching the Scooby Doo movie. They're both the twisted night. versions of Fantasy Island. Yep. Is what they're what they're what they're meant to be. Yeah, but yeah Slam and Salmon was was okay. Yeah. It I, I think it was a little bit hampered by the fact that uh, Waiting came out. Yeah, it was not too long simple. before it. I love Waiting. Yeah, and and Waiting is a solid comedy. It is, and <laughs> Slam and Salmon came out, and especially if you've worked in that industry, it's like oh it's like God. your Bible. You have to watch it to. <laughs> You know, I, I remember I, I worked when I first came here in to the U.S. I couldn't work, uh, air quotes, legally, um, but I could work in uh, restaurants or something like that. You know, cause what are we going to always... do if Trump comes after Rob? We're going to have to replace him. <laughs> oh no, I'm legal. I'm legal now. Don't it's worry, I'm legal for, now. No, you're. I had to change that. You're legal for now. For now, I had, I had, I had to make the trip up to Elizabeth just last month to become legal fully. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm a I'm a legal resident. I'll never be a citizen. Congrats. I've decided myself on that. <laughs> But um, <laughs> <laughs> why would you want to be a citizen of this fucked up country? <laughs> Just kidding, everybody. No, yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, it's it's. I, I I remember I watched that when I worked at uh, I worked at Olive Garden, and nice. it's one of the things. Like after our shift, one after my first couple of shifts, I sat down and with a bunch of people, and we watched that, and we're like, yeah, that that's waiting or that's up waiting, okay. yeah. I was like, that's that's us, you know? I mean, that's... That's it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you would like it for all of that stuff to happen behind the scenes, but, uh, you know... <laughs> not, not all of that happens. You're <laughs> right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so we normally reserve this this spot here for our favorite scene of the film, but we already did that uh, in, the, in the other part, so... Well, we blew it. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap. Uh, no, I mean, there's... <laughs> this this movie, It's it's not like... I can't believe we talked for almost two hours about Howard the Duck, and we maybe spent <laughs> an, an hour and fifteen on this. Well, I think we should do a follow up on, on Howard the Duck. <laughs> well, no, no follow up. <laughs> a part two. <laughs> All of us except for Mark said that we would not rewatch that film. I'll just talk by myself. Just I'm not talking about rewatching it, but <laughs> just put a mic in front of me. Stay tuned for Mark's uh, yeah. Howard the Duck minute by minute. Minute by minute. I love that He's one. Gonna yeah. do a minute by minute podcast on Howard Some the Duck. Some people go through Star Wars. He does. How are the duck? I'll give a lecture. <laughs> there you go. You just got your podcast. You were talking <laughs> no. about it at the beginning, right? Yes. Yeah. Now you've got it. a new plug. It. 
Remember when you asked me to be part of your podcast? I changed my mind. <laughs> just, I'm not just, doing Howard. It's just called Howard. It's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to watch the fan film and you want to be on my fan film, boys, you I'm can. Thinking about it. Real quick, before we get into anything else, I find this interesting. We all loved Super Troopers, right? We all we've all have glowing reviews of it. 35% on Rotten Tomatoes. 90% user score, though. What is that all about? So that means 90% of your average public loves this movie. The critics hate it. 35% of critics hate this elect- shit. It's Electoral College. What are critics? You know? I, I, they I, could, the, the, the people voted that they yeah. love this movie. This is a yeah, the electoral movie. Col- the, the Electoral College that is the one that makes the decision, right. they decided not to. Mm-hmm. You know? It's Trump. So, <laughs> so the category of Super Troopers is Trump. Well, well and we tie it all together. <laughs> comedy is subjective. I mean, everybody has their own different kind of flavors, and this is a very unique kind of comedy that doesn't come out very often, to be honest. And it's it is it's good. Though. I love it. I, it worked really it's well. That's the best part about it. I don't think you're ever going to get a comedy quite like this again, except maybe Super Troopers two. <laughs> I well, think, why is that, Dave? What do you think? I, I, I just think I'm that... I'm asking seriously. Like, I don't no, know. I mean, yeah. honestly, and not to get political, but we, we have been a little yeah. bit, like, just jokingly, but yeah. honestly... Well, except before 2001, it was a different time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, it was. I, 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 I mean, don't think, you know, you can really... I really don't think there's... And I, and I think this is really sad. I don't think there's enough humor left in the world. I think the humor... I mean, I think humor has been squeezed. Well, let's say not enough humor left in Hollywood. Yeah, I would say I mean, that. They, they, they don't see. I mean, this this goes to what you're just saying. Indiegogo has has been the the launch pad for Super Troopers two. Mm-hmm. Not Hollywood. Right. Not That's a right. major studio. Yeah. The people have decided also, that they want this movie. We've seen cult things come back and fail, which will I'll probably get into on your podcast. Fan film boys, when we talk about this fan film for for Blade Runner, uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Blade Runner was a cult film. It was not a smash hit in the movie theaters. It did not hit a big audience. It hit its cult following in the in the early nineties. Uh, once home vid- uh, late eighties, early nineties, when home video came out, uh, and in, in all of its re releases, people love talking about. It, people love discussing it. Fan uh, fans of film love it. Mm-hmm. However. Blade Runner 2049 was n- made $31 million. No, they wanted to make, no, $31 million opening weekend, which is. They were looking to do between 45 and 55. Right. They made $20 million less than they thought they were going to. The very next week, Happy Death Day was doing better than, than Blade Runner 2049 was in the, in the theaters. Happy People death. were not going to see it. And now, boo. Medea Halloween 2 is coming out. <laughs> is that really what it's called? And that <laughs> is going to be doing better than, uh, than Happy Death Day yeah. and Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. It's just not. Sad. <laughs> right. It's just. It, uh, that's a whole other thing I can go on a rant about. Um, Hollywood but, is afraid of cult well, franchises coming back also, and then failing because they, they often do. Yeah. Just thinking about it now, I mean, mainstream Hollywood comedies are so different than, than what they used to be. Now it's it's I don't know it's like raunchy for the sake of being raunchy. It's true. I mean, Super or or over raunchy, yeah. Yeah, Super Troopers had fucking a bear in it, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it was but it was bear. it was comedy. Comedy <laughs> fucking bear. Assistance. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, bear fucker. Yeah, bear fucker. Bear fucker. <laughs> but now it would be like a real bear. I don't know. They just like take everything too far, and yeah. it's like you know a lot of improv <laughs> going on, and just. Yeah, be a CGI bear in yeah. there. Comedy yeah. does have a a problem with finding its balance anymore. I will agree. Um, not to mention they overuse the same actors that are in all comedies. Yeah. They get overused so much. Or somebody They're that overlong. might have been in a serious movie, right. you yeah. you see them in a comedy, and you're like, I don't N- quite believe that. None of these guys made it big. I these, mean, these Judd Apatow comedies that are like three hours right. long. And stuff. The yeah. biggest, the biggest any of the guys from Broken Lizard have made it is uh, Jay Chandrasekhar was the director of. Of Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, he's, he's That's, directed some other stuff too, right? He's been directing TV shows and stuff for TV Fox. Stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so he's not. It's he's, but he's the biggest that they have. So Hollywood also has a problem with putting funding behind a movie that doesn't have a star. Mm. There's no star, right? right? They they they, they didn't for Brian Cox. <laughs> right. They didn't they they didn't add Will Ferrell to the cast, yeah. right? They yeah. didn't add you know someone that was bankable. I, Mark Wahlberg does not make an appearance in Super Troopers two, and The Rock isn't See, isn't working for the Spurberry Police. I'm curious so though, it's, the sequel might have afraid. some cameos in it. It's going to have cameos, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the cameos, I believe, from what I understand, are non-paid. Like they just kind of like, hey, if you want to be part be- of it. 
come by. Big names. Are yeah, there. we'll find we'll find a place for you. But they're not being paid. They're not no. get, or they're getting SAG minimum. You think for they'll it. get Wonder Woman back? Will they get Linda Carter Maybe. back? Yeah. I, I don't know. Will they get Brian Cox Wonder back? They're, they're yes, he's Gal, in the trailer. Gal Gadot now this time. Gal Gadot. Yeah. Gal Gadot. Um, but no, I actually want to get back to that. That'd be really interesting, quickly. wouldn't it? <laughs> Do you guys think the future of comedy is in trouble? Because we are in a generation of pre-tech. And actually, a lot of people still a little bit in Hollywood and these guys as well were pre-technology. And, and you know, I, I, you guys remember we, a bunch of friends. Are you talking about the the, you're, you're the Twitter comedians who who make a joke in 140 characters and like that's it? Like, Not even so much that. It's just because Twitter talking, just I'm, increased it to 280. So no, I'm talking, you know, we I'm can just, be funnier longer now. No, I'm, <laughs> talking, I'm talking about just being creative. And like creativity is 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 now no. gone to a whole different kind but it's, of way. No, it's create- outspan though. That's the problem. No, creativity like you, you is not dead. Twitter it's- is was 140 characters. That's our our span of of what we're recalling yeah. these days. Our attention spans. Are you know, just attention spans anymore. are not what they used to be. That's the problem. My it's attention like- span has always been shit. But I yeah, mean- I'm still able to sit through three hours of Blade Runner 2049 yeah. and fucking love it. Not a lot of people and are though. sit through 100 hours of this and though, love it. I didn't. Good. Uh, that was a test. <laughs> That's hard for Dave. <laughs> Usually, I do have my. If I don't like the movie, I'll take the phone out and not fucking care and start making my notes for the review, like right there in the theaters. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, I didn't start making notes until I sat in the car for about 10 minutes before That's I pulled away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's. I don't think it has anything to do with attention span. I just think it has to do with Hollywood not wanting to take very many risks anymore. The the, the days of risks are gone. Yeah. Uh, and super troopers would not get made. Right? No, you need you need a bankable person behind your film. It's the reason Baywatch got made, despite how bad it yeah, was, for some reason. because there were stars in it. There were there were stars in it. You put the rock in it. There you go. That's, That's right. I mean. uh, so they freaking remade Jumanji. Yeah, just because yeah. it's got the rock in it's it. It's got yeah. the rock in it. Right. So uh, and Future and president of the United States. And those movies. Made Made, and <laughs> Jumanji will make its money. Ba- Baywatch made its money, even though it was critically it, panned. It, yeah. it made money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it made probably its budget back. Probably international, yeah, probably more. But um, just because of that name, Baywatch. Just you from know, Germany alone. You know. Germany. Yeah. <laughs> They thought they were seeing Hasselhoff, so they went and saw it. (laughs) (laughs) Why? He's not singing? (laughs) But something like uh, the Chips remake didn't make money because there was no bankable. Dak Shepard is not a bankable star. I kind of like that movie, though. Oh, man. You're you're the only one. I know. (laughs) It was a bad movie. You know what? I I did see it on Cody. I'm not going to lie. I didn't pay for it. But but also, Super Troopers and other films like this, they're original, right? I mean, we're we're, not- I love something that's original. That's the problem. We're not used to- So many remakes these days. We're not used to original content anymore. Uh, Uh, Everything is is in something else's universe, or it's a prequel, or it's a sequel Mm -hmm. to something- We made a joke earlier. We we were talking about Gremlins, and I said something about the Gremlins universe. Yeah. It was kind of a joke, but not really. Yeah, exactly. If they reboot it, I mean- They'll, they'll, they'll make a universe they're of it. Make, they'll, they'll no, make no, several it's not films if they reboot it. They are rebooting oh, yeah. it, and it's being directed by the guy that directed Krampus from two years ago. Right. So it no, is being rebooted. And just like everything else comedy, it'll probably have Adam Scott in it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see uh, anything on um, War War on Everybody or War on Everyone on Netflix? It has Alexander Skarsgård and Michael, S- Michael Pena playing mm-hmm. like buddy cops, just really vulgar, rated R. I actually stopped, like, probably... <laughs> 30 to 40 minutes in because it was just it was it was so cliche and it's so over the top horrible humor and they're playing a straight face you know and it, it just was not even mm. funny and you could tell mm. I saw the trailer and I was kind of intrigued and I was like okay I'll give it a shot and then I could saw that I, it just literally disappeared and so, I saw it on Netflix and I gave it a shot I'm like fuck I now I know why it disappeared because so it was we've, just garbage we've talked a long time so Mark you know I don't even remember what your original question was but <laughs> I'm just glad my headache went away. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't think w- that we really get movies like this anymore. And I think for all the reasons we just discussed, that's why. I think we nailed it. And <laughs> I think we will, but but very, very yeah. seldom. Because everything comes in waves. Exactly. That we will have another period where Hopefully. Hollywood allows itself to be experimental again and stuff it might like be that. On Netflix, don't Who forget knows? Hollywood. Yeah, that's what I think it'll be. Yeah. Hollywood it'll be Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. Or Hollywood, like. just like no, they tried that with Joe Dirt on Hulu. It didn't <laughs> work. Uh, or Crackle, sorry. Uh, but Hollywood, like everything else in our world, whether you want to admit it or not, is still recovering from a recession. They lost a lot of money during that recession. So did everybody else, and and a lot of studios have had a lot of big flops when they went out and tried to be experimental. They want to do what's safe right now, make their money, and 
get out. And then, Jay, uh, I don't remember what your fucking question was, but I think we answered it. Uh, not really, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fuck you. So, <laughs> let's get into what our topic is for the next Movie Cocktail podcast. So, the category for this next one is Practical Effects Creature Features. Oh, yeah. And one of us will flirt with this line. So since I'm the one that's selecting the category, uh, I get to select the first film. I made sure I took this one so no one else could. Mine is John Carpenter's The Thing, which is absolute my my high water mark for perfect creature effects. Absolutely a uh, fucking amazing. Next around the horn is Jay. Hold on, no one laugh. No one laugh when he says it. <laughs> I'll try. First of all, it is perfect. <laughs> it's not, but let's go. 1997's Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> no one vote for that. No. One vote. Can I veto no, that? No, they will. They will. We want. We 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 talked about this. We were discussing whether we were going to veto that because there you is. You can't. Hold on. There is just literally. It. There is blatant CGI yeah, of it. I could not be. Yeah, no, that is true. From. That there are some sequences <laughs> with CGI, but. For most of it, it is practical. And not even Jurassic Park level CGI. <laughs> it's just be, like terrible CGI. There might CGI. be a shot or two. But this where... is just a classic, fun, stupid, bad movie that oh, it's bad. everybody oh, it's enjoys. Bad. It's yeah. bad. I'll, I'll give it's you that. It's piranha bad. I know that. When he regurgitates uh, John Voight and he winks at him. I, I, mean, that's... I bring up I thriller mean... sci-fi classic, The Thing, and he throws out... Oh, uh, he throws <laughs> out Noah the... Howard the Duck. I mean, Jay, I could this do the that. choice Jay. of... I, I think he has you that. This right? is the Howard Jay, the Duck of this category. I could do bad movies all this day. This is the how with the duck of this category. I could do bad movies all day, but I can't. I don't know. Nobody's going to vote for this. Nobody's voting we for this. We shall see. Practical Nobody. effects. I said practical. <laughs> Alien, whatever. You could have went with it. You could have went with I'm Aliens. Try, I'm, I'm trying People to throw out a little Watch different. You, so Jay's going to win now. Yeah. He, better, we, he right. better not. <laughs> Rob, what do you got? You know what? I'm going for 1975, Steven Spielberg, Jaws. All right. So uh, me, Mark, and Jay have actually talked about this film on original Movie Cocktail Podcast. Way back when. Which has been stricken from the record. Yes. However, uh, when we had a gap uh, where we did not record anything for August, I did throw Jaws out there, uh, our old Jaws. So you can listen to that. But if you guys <laughs> do vote for Jaws, you're going to get an updated cocktail for Jaws and an updated discussion for Jaws. Okay. We will be much less drunk this time. I, I sent it into <laughs> group text that i was putting that out there so i made it known to everybody we were smashed during that one no we yeah it, we this, used to drink very heavily during these things yeah. <laughs> so uh but i i i would 100 percent love to do jaws again it is probably up there for my favorite film of all time it's oh, in the it's in the top five favorite films of all scared, time for me the hell out of me i please. would love to make a new cocktail for it i did make a cocktail for it before but i would love to make a new cocktail for it i can so, definitely talk choices. about it again yeah yeah, I mean, I could talk about it all day. Uh, so if you guys vote for Jaws, no, no, no hard feelings. I'm happy to do it all over again. It'll be Jaws the sequel, just better. Mm. <laughs> Jaws the Revenge. As long as we don't get Jaws Anaconda. Because I don't know how to make a blood <laughs> orchid. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make yeah. a blood orchid uh, cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, what do you got? What's yours? Well, Jay, I just want to say I feel like you picked this category for me. No, I, I picked the because, category. And I'm saying I feel like you picked it for yeah. me because I'm an old man and I love my old practical effects. Um, I I don't know. I, actually, this one came right to me. I looked at my DVD collection. I was like, oh, perfect. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors because that puppet is fucking amazing. It is. Part. <laughs> I actually built one for high school. What? Yeah. Our, our, our high school theater group. Uh, I was... I, I, because I was in the art, uh, art department and art club, uh, we did a lot of the sets and stuff. Okay. So I wound up building, uh, a, a good portion of the, of oh, the puppet too. of, of Audrey. Famous Simo. So, uh, it was, it was fun. It was kind of like a, we, we kind of like felt like, Jim Henson, kind of, because yeah. we had to think about how it was Jim Henson, right? How how two people were yeah. going to be operating this thing. Yeah. Now ours obviously wasn't as realistic as the one that was in well, film, yeah. but uh, it was it was a pretty decent, mm. pretty decent sized and pretty you know decently done. We had uh, two people inside of it. One person was kind of like towards the bottom and kind of like working the uh, working the the, the, the leaves, leaves on the side, 
And then there's another person who stood behind them on like a stool and had to get up. And then we had basically like two poles that attached the two mouth that, that attached the top and bottom of the mouth. And they would just sit there and move it. And, mm-hmm. you know, then we had yeah. another person who was one of the actors who was uh, behind the stage with the microphone doing the voice and stuff like that. So we actually had three people uh, <laughs> for a high school, you know, musical pretty much almost as much as Jabba the Hutt right yeah coming together <laughs> to make to make one character and uh I remember going to the to the opening night and being extremely pissed off that the one kid operating the mouth could not get the mouth to, to sync, sync up. up and I was like fuck it just put me in that thing <laughs> Did you go in? No, I did uh. not. But I was very upset. <laughs> that would have that would have made the story, right? But I spent, great, yeah. I spent so much time so making I stormed this. backstage. I took him out. And I ate him. <laughs> as a plant. I kicked him out of that mouth. I, waited I was the mouth of Seymour. I waited until he was taking a piss and I yeah. choked him out. <laughs> and he peed all over himself and I laughed at him and took a picture. <laughs> and then I got in Seymour. And then I played and I, I rocked that crowd. <laughs> so, uh... I, I love that movie, and I don't uh, think it's one of my favorites. I would love to talk about it. Uh, making a cocktail for it, it's going to be a little difficult, but it's going to be green. I've Something I've green. I've risen to to some challenges before, so uh, I'm be happy to talk about any one of these films. So your choices for practical creature feature, practical effects creature features is John Carpenter's The Thing. No one knows or cares who directed 1997's Anaconda. <laughs> and no one cares. <laughs> Steven Spielberg's Jaws. 75, yeah. 75. So Frank Oz directed Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, he was that also said is amazing. Also. He was he was the voice of Yoda. He's also the voice, the original voice of Grover I knew that. on Sesame Grover Street. Grover is my favorite. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Anyway, I could talk about that movie, but mm-hmm. let's let's you know so see make, what happens. Yeah. So make sure you head over to Twitter. Uh, the poll will be up several days after this uh, after this episode releases. Head over to Twitter. Make sure you follow us at Super Movie Pod on there. Make sure that you follow Jay on Twitter for all of his comments and everything. Anaconda <laughs> tweets. Anaconda <laughs> tweets. Uh, Jay is actually going to watch Anaconda and then live tweet every he probably, minute of it. He probably picked the movie and hasn't watched it yet. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've seen it a lot. Of it. <laughs> it's his. It's his. Favorite. It'll be that one movie, movie cocktail that he's seen more than everybody else. Some Nobody people's, else watches it. Some yeah. people's favorite John Voight film is Easy Rider. Yeah. Some people's favorite John Voight film is is uh, Deliverance. Even For Jay, it's Anaconda. 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 <laughs> Some people even like Varsity Blues. <laughs> Jay likes Anaconda. <laughs> I do love Varsity Blues. That's true. You want to defend yourself. I don't like want that. your life. Anyway. And then uh, <laughs> make sure that you follow Rob on Twitter. Uh, he is at FanFilmBoys with a Z. Pod. Pod. Fan Film Boys Pod. Fan Film Boys Pod. Uh, and then you can also catch up on his latest episode, which will be about a fan film that is uh, in the Blade Runner universe. And I will be joining him on there for that. And then make sure that you head over to www.markdickerson.com to check out what Mark's up to. He has a bunch of uh, films that he puts up I there. Got lots of shit going yeah, on. Various, <laughs> Mark has various short films up there. He also has feature length films. Some of them uh, 90 minutes. I think you have one yeah. that's you have one that's like 100 and, 105, I think. It's somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, so make sure you check out Mark on www.markdickerson.com. That's Mark spelled with a C, by the way. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed our long, long discussion. Not so much about Super Troopers, but just about comedy in general. About life. Yeah. Just about... Just about <laughs> I like that. Just about what... Just about, about everything. Life. Shooting the shit. Shooting the shit. That's right. Let's hope we all don't get eaten by an anaconda before, <laughs> before the next one comes. <laughs> Boat people. Meow. You know you love it. And meow. And meow. <laughs> Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.